deep in the frozen forests of Russia lives a predator. It's one of the world's rarest animals, the Siberian tiger. He's right in there, right there, less than 300 meters. Only a handful of pioneering scientists have ever seen one in the wild. Now, a research team is pushing deep into the forest to document these animals as never before. Clearly, you're looking at a, a Siberian tiger. They're working in one of the planet's coldest places. This is a lawless wilderness. It's an illegal rifle. Where tiger and man compete to survive. We've joined scientists who are getting closer than ever before to revealing the intimate lives of Siberia's snow tigers. I've studied Bengal tigers in India and Nepal, but the Siberian tiger and its habitat here in the Russian Far East are completely new to me. Siberian tigers once ranged across Northern Asia. Now, the remaining few live here in the Russian Far East. Scientists think there are now less than 350 in the wild. I'm part of a research team trying to document the lives of individual Siberian tigers. They roam over vast areas of forest. We've been on the trail of a few important tigers, but we discovered a problem. In a vital stronghold, we found male tigers but no breeding females. We began the hunt for female tigers, but our mission was interrupted by tragic circumstances. Three Siberian tiger cubs lost their mother. Two of the orphan cubs were saved. Wow, tiger. But the third was found with only hours to live. Struggling, right? He's struggling. Watch out. Oh. This is great. This is what we wanted. Get this guy. Cub is so weak, they need to act fast to save him. With no clinic nearby, they take him to a house in a local village. A bedroom becomes a makeshift surgery. Dr. Dale McHale has been working with Siberian tigers for over 20 years. He's dehydrated, so we just want to get a drip in and get some fluids back into him. It also help warm him up, get some warm fluids into him, so just to get him rehydrated, basically. Cameraman Max Hug Williams tracked this cub with rangers for over a week. When we first came up here, I didn't really know what to expect, but following these guys around, it's just unbelievable. They literally give up everything for this species. You get pretty choked up when you see these guys marching through the forest and you think, you know, they're like, they're like something out of the military, but then deep down, they're doing all of this for a tiger. Problem because it's just pulse is really weak.
The cub is so dehydrated, they can't use a drip. And now we're trying to warm them up with a hot water bottle here. Heart is racing, but there's not good circulation. Um, so this animal's fighting for its life right now. The guy's frantically trying to get some fluids in. He's so dehydrated. Temperature's gone up a lot. It was 95.5. And now it's 99.2. So in the last half hour, it's gone up four to four degrees. He's coming around, he's coming around. He's waking up from the anesthetic, but it's still uncertain if he'll survive. The team have done all they can for now. While we wait to find out his fate, we return to our main mission. The reason we've come to Russia. We're here to find out what Siberian tigers need if they're to have a future in the wild. The lack of breeding females here is a major problem and something that Dale is concerned about. He's collaborating with Dr. Viktor Lukarevsky, who's been studying tigers in the crucial Usarisk Reserve. So, it's likely this tiger is right on this, this uh, bear that he dragged on. Of the remaining Siberian tigers, they believe only 100 are females of breeding age. Reserves like Usarisk are essential tiger nurseries. These protected areas have become havens for tigers to be able to reproduce in safety and produce as many tiger cubs as they can, as often as they can. And then those tiger cubs are dispersed into the larger and less safe habitat. The problem is, Usarisk only has one resident female, Serga, and she's too old to breed. Without a fertile female, the male tigers will leave, and the reserve's population will collapse. But Victor has found something that gives us hope. Photographs from camera traps can be used to identify individuals. Tiger stripes are like fingerprints, unique to each animal. This photograph has just been analyzed, and it's not Serga. It's her daughter. It's a princess. Uh -huh. oh, it is 22 November uh, last year. So 22nd of November, 22nd. 2002, two months ago, basically. Two, months two ago. three months ago. Two or three months yes. ago. So yeah. before that, you hadn't had uh, footage of Princess for a year, is that right? Yes, uh, a year we have no uh, information of, of from here, and I, I thought that she uh, she is uh, she's poached, she's she's killed. Or, yeah. So yeah. this is really great news. And whereabouts is this? It's so, inside of the protected area. So it's in the reserve. In the reserve. In the reserve. In the reserve. Inside the reserve. But she still overlapped with Serga, yeah, her yes, mother. Yes, yes, yes. So there's some overlap. There. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, half uh, area. Half of her overlaps with her mother. Half of it? Okay, yeah. that's, that's yeah. bigger than I thought. Okay. But guys, where do we start? Do we it doesn't, doesn't matter. Which is why it's probably best for us to split up to try and maximize sure. the chances of, of finding her as soon as possible, yeah? yeah. Great stuff, though. Great image. That's Good a great news. find. This news, for me, that was best news for the last year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, sure. Princess holds the key to the future of the Usarisk Tigers. But apart from this one photograph, Victor has no evidence that she's still in the reserve. She's vanished. Now our team have just three weeks to try to find her before we have to leave. So we split up to search the area where she was last caught on camera.
And so if Princess is here, it's really important to find out what condition she's in, how often she uses this protected area, and if there's even the slightest chance she might be pregnant. So about four days ago, we had a warm front come through, rain came down, and amazingly uh, uh, had a very warm period. A tiger walked through here while there was wet, wet, basically a slush. And so it's amazing, but you can actually get down and, and uncover almost like dinosaur tracks, uh, this, this track of a male walk, walking down this road in the reserve. But they're just, just kind of spectacular to see. Siberian tigers prefer to use roads rather than walk in deep snow. It helps them to conserve energy in winter. I'm setting camera traps which are triggered by movement. I'm aiming the cameras at the only road in Usarisk Reserve. If Princess is still here, there's a good chance she'll walk past them. Tigresses will often donate a portion of their home range to their female offspring. What they're trying to do is ensure that their daughters have a high probability of success in, in raising their own young. And so in a situation like here, we've got Princess who is using part of her mother's home range and, and hopefully uh, acquiring the benefits that her, her mother had in that same area. In other words, high densities of prey, a, a good knowledge of that area, and a, a, also increasing the success in terms of rearing young. Winter is too long in Russia. It's six, seven months per year. It's, it's, it's too long. But in the snow, you can uh, collect a lot of data. In previous years, Victor has managed to capture some of the Siberian tigers in Usarisk to fit them with tracking collars. If he's close enough, these collars help him to locate the animals. Princess was fitted with a collar, but Victor hasn't picked up her signal for over 18 months. It's working. It's a, it is a look. It is a look. It's enough far. I think uh, maybe maybe half a kilometer. Maybe it's outside of the... the... Wait. Victor has found the signal of a large male. He's a little too close for comfort. And these tracks lead right past one of our cameras. We have a look at the footage. Okay. This is really interesting because the tracks look fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Dale. It's a Dale. <laughs> this is great. We, we split up to look for Princess. And what do we get on camera traps? Dale. So Dale triggered it. <gasps> <laughs> with a collar, with a collar. Who's that? Is that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Luke. No, no, Luke. no, it's a Luke. How soon after Dale walking down the road by himself? Twenty minutes ago, Luke was going that way. Twenty minutes ago. I hope everything gets well. No, Dale is fine. I hope. Dale was going down this way. The tiger yes, was course. going up this way. But. First don't, was... Victor, don't. Let's go find Dale. Let's just go find Dale now, please. Tigers hunt at dusk. We had planned to collect Dale before sunset, but we've got a problem. Go. We're just on our way to find Dale, and of course, as luck would have it, we get stuck in the snow. It happens all the time, but tonight is not the night we want it to happen, so we're just getting to pull us out and then we're going to try and make sure Dale's okay. The darker it gets, the more worried we are about Dale. But thankfully, 
we find him. Dale. Liz. We have to we have to show you something. Come with me. Seriously, okay. I'm so glad right. to see you. I'm glad to see you too. <sighs> Let me just show you something. All right, great. Dale has rarely been so close to a tiger. <laughs> I was too early. I should have waited 20 minutes. We would have met. Oh, my God. It's in So first of all, me and Victor were like, oh, there's Dale. Oh, tiger. Yay, tiger. And then we're like, oh, my gosh, Dale. <laughs> I think it, look at you. Look at you. Like Truly. No, no, not a bother in the world. No problems at all. And listen, I mean, huh? day one looking for princess, no princess, but we know Luke's in the area, and who knows, possibly he's here because of princess. It could be a possibility. We'll see. It's a, it's a result. You're safe and sound. A healthy result, and he's safe and sound. And he's really healthy and safe and sound. <laughs> right, dinner, guys, and a drink to celebrate, I reckon. All right. Yeah? Great, great. <laughs> this young male tiger could be looking for a mate, but we still haven't found any females. Next morning, we head back into the reserve, and Dale discovers just how close he came to meeting Luke. Yeah, so he came down to here and, and turned around and went back. And saw me standing on the embankment there, 20, 30 yards away, turned around and ran back. I never even saw him, didn't hear him, just missed him. Huh. He stopped here, too. He may have heard me walking down the road. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell, but I uh, may have heard something and, and still continued down. They thought I was a potential prey at that time, but he changed his mind once he got down there. He said, I don't want any of that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Victor and I follow Luke's tracks forward to see where he went. Male tigers travel huge distances, patrolling their territory and looking for mates. Luke could lead us to Princess. Was, Had a bit of a rest. Here. Tiger beds here are so much more telling than those in India. I mean, you always see indentations, but the snow really clearly makes out the shape of the tiger. You can just visualize a tiger much more easily. Is it possible that he came off the road, he laid down because we were on the road making so much noise looking at the camera trap footage? Yes, uh, he, my, maybe he listened to the car. So while we were watching him on the camera trap, he was watching <laughs> us. But he, he was watching, yes. Yeah. Do you remember uh, he look and turn back? No. Yeah. And then go. He was so close to us. Dale wasn't the only one who had a close encounter with a tiger. Scientists can spend their entire careers studying Siberian tigers and never see one in the wild. To help us locate Princess, we're deploying 30 state-of-the-art video camera traps. Very little footage has ever been filmed of wild Siberian tigers. These cameras could help us capture their unseen lives for the first time. So these pictures uh, provide a means of uh, putting a face to these animals and understanding them more as personalities than as mysterious animals. It just provides an opportunity to better understand these, these individuals as, as characters and not as dangerous, mysterious beasts. If we're lucky, our cameras will find Princess. I'll stay in Usarisk helping Victor, while Dale and wildlife cameraman Max are heading north. For over 20 years, Dale has lived in Siberia, working for the Wildlife Conservation Society. His main research site is 900 kilometers away in the Sukkot Allen Reserve. It's a 12-hour road trip. Dale has brought Max along to try to film another important female tiger. Since 
Sikot Allen lies on the coast of the Sea of Japan, near the small town of Ternay. People here live with tigers on their doorstep. Dale wants Max to track down a particular female tiger he's concerned about. So this is Vivara here, is it? When did you take this shot? In July, in July. And sh when did you first call her then? Was that... So we, we called her a year ago in September. Uh, and so she's, she's been on the air for about 14 months. Um, she's a young female. Uh, we were, when we captured her, she hadn't given birth. But she, for the last couple months, she's been concentrated in one area, and we think that she has cubs now. She's quite, she's quite small there. So she's, you're saying how old? She's probably three, no more than four years old. If she, if she has cubs now, it's definitely her first cubs. This is August. This is August. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's like a jungle in the summer, isn't it? Yeah, it's such it, a different it, it, it looks so stark now. and, and uh, bleak wow. right now, and it's like a jungle in the summertime. Unbelievable. We know where she was a few days ago, uh, and we need to get out there uh, before another snowfall comes. Tiger numbers in Sukkot Allen have been decimated by poachers and disease. They're at their lowest for 35 years. Vivara is the reserve's last known female. Her recent movements suggest she might have cubs. That's what they need to confirm. Max is working with Dale's colleagues, Sveta and Kolya, to track her. To catch up with Vivara, they'll need to travel light. They don't carry guns for protection, only flares. Well, I suppose if we come face to face with a tiger, <laughs> we've got to light ourselves up like a Christmas tree, otherwise uh, could be in a bit of trouble. Using the signal from Vivara's collar, they've picked up her trail. After walking for six hours, they're 10 miles from the nearest road. Just had a crow go overhead, which is normally a very good sign that you're close to a kill. The guys are saying that Vara is about three to 500 meters away. But this telemetry is not an exact science. These are just bearings we tried to plot onto a map. So she could be very, very close indeed. The trackers take another reading and they're in for a shock. Bavara now, they think, is literally 200 metres that way. But it brings it home how quickly things can change here. One minute we are strolling along, and the next minute we're 200 metres probably from a tiger. So we've got these flares out, and I'm assured that it'll scare a tiger off, but I'm not quite convinced. <laughs> Something in the back of my mind just keeps saying we're slightly crazy getting within 200 metres of a cat, which could get here in a matter of seconds if it wanted to. But Apparently, these are going to keep anything at bay. Surprising a Siberian tiger would be a bad move, especially if she has cubs. They soon discover why Vivara is in the area. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. So she's made this kill? Yes. And how old do you think? Uh, probably a week. A week old? Yeah. Look at the size of it. So the tiger took that down? Yeah. My God. Camera traps at the kill site could record Vivara if she returns to eat and help to reveal whether she has cubs. They also set cameras along trails and by known scent marking trees. If Vivara has cubs and Max can film her, it could be a rare insight into Siberian tiger maternal behavior. After a few days, the camera traps deliver our first glimpse of Vivara. 
Despite the fact that it makes no noise, she's clearly aware of the camera. She's nervous, and there's no sign of any cubs. Down south in Usarisk, Victor and I are still searching for Princess. She hasn't been seen for three months. In previous years, Victor has often found signs of her outside the safety of the protected area. Today, we're going beyond the reserve's borders to try to find her. Whoa. So normally we use Victor's trucks to go into the reserve, but today we're going further afield. And so we need something a little bit bigger. Can I even get up here? Ooh. You've got to come and see this. Dobre dien, minia zavut Liz. Alexi. Dobre dien. Roma, nice to meet you. Dobre dien. This place is epic. It's even a movie of this, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving in. These six-wheel drive trucks transport workers into the most inaccessible parts of the forest. They're designed to withstand the most extreme conditions, the kind of vehicle you'd only find in Siberia. Victor is searching for Princess's signal. Each tiger collar has a unique frequency. But these signals rarely reach more than two kilometers. And we don't even know if she's alive. Just to get one glimpse, you know, just a flash of orange. That would be quite something. Let's see as a as a place as a area, but uh, it's difficult now to find her. A short drive from the reserve, we find a scar cutting through the forest. The trees have been cleared to make way for a gas pipeline. A service road runs alongside it. Why is this access road such a problem then? It is the main problem for, for the wildlife because uh, it's make very accessible for the poacher who can come here to hunt the different animals. We're talking about an access road that is an easy way for poachers to get into what was before an inaccessible forest. How long does this road go on for? Uh, uh, 760 kilometers. 760 kilometers long. And that's only part of the entire gas line. Victor, how does this make you feel? Uh, can I ask you, what do you feel when you have seen piece of art destroyed. Now, obviously, it's important to bring gas to people. I know you're not saying that it shouldn't course, be done. Of but, course. But what's the solution, Victor, when you have to bring the gas down to Vladivostok from Siberia? Do you think there's a better way of doing this? Of course. We can use the existing infrastructure outside of the forest. So what do you, as conservationists, do to try and protect the forest when you've got something like this carving its way through 800 kilometers of tiger habitat? Um, uh, the solution is to increase the number of rangers, to uh, recultivate all road and to close the, such a road. 
The damage here is bad, but the service road is the real threat to the Tigers. It's only four kilometers from the border of the Usarisk Reserve, giving hunters easy access to the heart of the forest. If Princess is spending time here, outside the reserve, she's at risk. Eighty percent of Siberian tiger deaths are caused by man. Tigers are prized for their fur, bones and body parts used in traditional Chinese medicine. A single tiger can sell for $50,000. This footage was filmed by police near Usarisk while we were working in the reserve. In a single raid last year, they seized the remains of eight tigers. That's 2% of the wild Siberian tiger population eradicated in one hit. Back up north in the Sukkot Allen Reserve, Max and the trackers are still on the trail of Vivara in the hope that she has cubs. Very little is known about how Siberian tigers raise their young, but we do know that they can give birth any time of the year, even in the dead of winter. Then they find an important clue. It looks like cubs staying here and playing for some time. Well, at last we, we exactly know that Varvara has cubs and we at last uh, see cubs tracks. It's very good news. It's difficult to say, but it looks like more than one cub, maybe two. That's good news. Maybe three. <laughs> but I think two or three, maybe. We'll see. Barbara lay here with cubs because oh, no snow over here. So we can imagine how it was nice. One, two, and three. We know that not two, uh, three or four. Three or four. Yeah. That's incredible, though. Uh, Either yeah. way, it's good news. It, yes, it's uh, very good news. The cubs playing here and try to go inside this tree. Sveta keeps saying how they've been playing on this tree, playing on that tree. I just wish I was here to see them bounding around in the snow. You can see them on this tree. They run up there, probably jump off there. Sveta has also found the remains of a deer. So we finally found the kill. So it looks like she's feeding her cubs well. I'm sure, yes, she's a good mom. They, uh, her cubs are very fat. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Dale's not going to believe it. Max and the team have proof that Vivara has had her very first litter. It's fantastic news for the Sukkot Allen Reserve. Max is now hoping that his camera traps have captured Rivara and her cubs. So I want to show you uh, some of the results, the, the fruits of your labor, as you say. So this is one of the first animals we saw, which is a full, full, full frame <laughs> sick of deer. Uh, we got some night shots too. I can show you a few critters walking through. Oh, wow. Uh, Lynx showed it's up creeping here. creeping in there. This is interesting too because I think it's the oh, same wow. animal. He got, look at this, he sent marks right on that. 
<laughs> and then, just to keep that momentum going, we've got another animal walk through. Oh, amazing. Is that Bavara? No, that it's not. It's a male. It's a male. But watch, watch. He's, he go, cut, walks to the edge of frame, and then he does a scrape. He's doing a scrape right now. So wow, look at that. Yeah. So we got him, which is pretty, pretty neat. We didn't really expect it. The cameras have captured other animals scavenging Vervara's kill. Sable, a type of weasel, eat whatever they find. Eagles, and even wild boar, benefit from tiger kills in winter. And then, Vivara makes her entrance. Oh, look at that, daytime as well. Yeah, she looks great. But look how cautious she is. She's smelling where you guys were. She still looks quite young. I mean, she is she, the first she time is, She is, she does, she does look young, doesn't she? But yeah, she's, yeah. In, she's in good shape. Great shape. And the other camera we had here, don't tell me that didn't fire. Hang on. Markings like that. It's, it's, it's nice, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. But where are the cubs? I mean, she's. Well, we, we didn't actually get to the site where the cubs were stashed, and she didn't bring them down through here, unfortunately. So we missed that opportunity. Collectively, with the, the radio collar, the camera traps, and these videos, we've gotten a much better understanding of the way mothers interact and take care of their cubs. Up until this point, we had always thought that females would leave their cubs at a kill site and then go off hunting and then go back to the kill site, get their cubs and bring it to the new kill. But we've seen in this video right here, they don't leave their cubs at the kills. And that, that makes sense because that's a dangerous spot. We've seen through these camera traps, all these other carnivores coming through, lynx and sable and wi even wild boar coming in. So that's actually a dangerous place to leave your cubs. So she takes them off someplace, and we didn't, we didn't really realize that until we started getting some of this footage. The Siberian tiger is one of the world's most endangered animals. Footage like this is invaluable. Only by studying this remarkable animal's natural behavior can scientists learn how to protect it. And while we haven't seen the cubs, it looks like Vivara has got over her camera shyness. Her new family gives hope for the future. Another hope is that Siberian tiger cubs, orphaned through poaching, could be returned to the wild. Our three rescued cubs have been reunited at this rehabilitation center near Usarisk, run by the Severtsov Institute. Today, they're being released into an outdoor enclosure where they can learn to become independent. Max has been following the cubs from the beginning. We've got these special remote cameras and we're rigging up the enclosure for the cubs. From now on, they can't have any human interaction at all if they're going to be released as wild tigers. So we've got to set up these cameras, drop way back, and then hopefully we'll get a glimpse of them coming out for the first time. The team need to see how the cubs are recovering from their ordeal. The last time Max saw them, one of the cubs was in critical condition. The cameras will allow scientists to observe the cubs from a cabin 100 meters away.
As night falls, the cubs still haven't emerged from the hut. Max settles in to keep watch. I haven't really seen any activity yet. I think we all thought the cubs would be coming out, all three of them together. It's nearly midnight now and we've got the infrared lights up, but we haven't seen a single sign of any cubs. It might take a few days or at least a couple of nights before they even come out. But to his surprise, there's movement in the enclosure. It's the third cub, the one who almost died. Bloody hell, they've grown. <laughs> He's looking so healthy. Wow, look at that. They've been inside that hut for so long. It's a real safe haven for them, so it's a massive leap for them. But it's just the start of the journey, a long, long journey of becoming a tiger again. I mean, I really just want to come back and see them in the day. By the next morning, all three cubs are out. Over the next 12 months, this space will be enlarged and live prey will be released so that the cubs can learn to hunt. Incredibly, these three cubs represent 1% of the entire wild population. If their luck holds, within a year they could be back in the forest. The next generation of Siberian tigers. our time in Siberia. With two days left, Victor and I still haven't found any sign of Princess. Today, we're searching the northern border of the reserve, but we're having some trouble. <laughs> Just outside of the reserve is a privately owned hunting club. There are signs of tigers here. Could one of them be Princess? Victor can cover more ground alone and heads out to search for her. The staff here put out food to increase the number of deer and boar for hunting. and that means more prey for tigers. But I'm curious to know about the hunter's attitudes to this predator, so I speak to the manager. He says, you can see by the tracks here that uh, we get along okay with tigers. You know, he takes his share, uh, especially of wild boar, but uh, we, we have no problems. Уменьшение тигра сразу же покрывается волками. Волк как бы проблемы больше от него. On this uh, uh, hunting lease, there are about four tigers in this area. He said, if there was an elimination of the tigers here, wolves would come in, and that's more of a problem than tigers. 
So here, at least, the hunters and tigers seem to benefit from each other. Wolves are pack animals, capable of taking large numbers of prey. But tigers don't tolerate wolves in their territory. This hunting ground may not be the norm in the Russian Far East, but tigers here are protected from illegal poachers and have plenty of food. Victor continues the search for princess. The last hope for a breeding population in the neighboring Usarisk reserve. The next morning, he has something for me to hear. So who's that? What's that sound? Is that a collar? I have a record uh, of uh, Princess. Princess? Yes. In the hunting lease yesterday? Yesterday. Oh, la, 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 la. Victor has found Princess. She's alive. I was very happy when I have heard the... Uh, Victor, but that's fantastic. I, I, I do a lot of trek. Yeah. We go in this mountain. So you went up the mountain? Yes. And I switched on. Oh. And I heard the Princess. Victor, how important is it to have proof of Princess? for the reserve, for the future of tigers here? It is, it is good for, uh, for population, it's very important. Very important, and now that we have proof, you know she's, she's alive, she's here. The female is the future. The cubs is the future. Like uh, our children, they are uh, future for the human population. <laughs> Princess is the key to the future of this vital reserve. The fact that she's alive is fantastic news for the wider Siberian tiger population. Hopefully, it won't be too long before she breeds with one of the males in Usarisk and has cubs herself. At the start of our mission, we deployed 30 camera traps. And we've already had some fantastic results. Dale is keen to show us the latest images. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, so I, I want to show you uh, footage we got of uh, a female up in Ternay. <sighs> oh, she's absolutely magnificent. This young female doesn't have a collar. It's the first time anyone has seen her. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Having a good old sniff. Yeah, that's incredible, oh. huh? Whispers right up to the camera. Just no matter how often you see a tiger, it, it just takes your breath away, doesn't it? This footage is just mind-blowing. I've not seen any wild Siberian tiger footage like this anywhere in the world. This grimace is the Fleming response. It allows her to make sense of the scent left by other tigers. To see this young female coming into this area, curious, active, with a character, I mean, she really inspires hope for the future of tigers across the region. The cameras have revealed there is another breeding female in Dale's reserve. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I hope we will can save for the future. Honestly, how can you argue that that and its habitat have to be saved? Looking at this, it kind of eliminates the need 
to ask that question. Yeah. The, the video itself states the obvious, that this animal deserves a place to live. It's the end of our time here in Russia. Working with these scientists, we've seen firsthand the challenges threatening the survival of the Siberian tiger. And our cameras have helped to unlock the secrets of this elusive big cat. The vital work to save the Siberian tiger continues. Their future hangs in the balance. But I've been overwhelmed by the passion and dedication of the people I've met here. And perhaps through their efforts, there will still be tigers roaming these magical forests for generations to come.